All right, guys. So I thought I'd better film this because uh, I just got carried away and started pulling things apart. I have two Hitachi uh, ZV65R trench leg compactors. I bought them both off Marketplace. They run their little three horsepower, four stroke Robin Subaru engine. And uh, I think I figured out what's wrong with them already. This one will start with choke on, run momentarily, hammer a couple of times and stop again. The other one doesn't have as much compression, still starts, but um, I got it to start on parts cleaner through the intake manifold there and it ran for a bit, happy days, kept going. So what we're going to do is zip this carby off. Once we get the carby off, we will check out the needle and seat. So we'll leave the fuel line connected, take the carby off, take the bowl off the carby, check the needle and seat, then we'll check the main jet, give the main jet a hit with some compressed air, make sure it's clear, and see what's going on. There was some dirt in the bowl, I drained the bowl in there already. There's like, there's only so many things it can be. Pull the spark plug out, it's got spark, it sparks, fires, so I bought the two of these for 250 bucks, and they're about three grand each new. So these are a 65 kilo trench leg. What did you see down there? Um, same style as most. Beautiful and quiet though, because they're four cycle. As you can see, the valves overhead. Cute little engine. Hardly any smoke. I like the two stroke ones. The reason I bought this is two weekends ago I hired a two stroke one. I couldn't keep it running. Um, it just kept dying on me. Checked all the usual things and then realised hey I'm paying you know $70 a day to hire this piece of crap. So I took it back to the uh, hire place, dropped it on their uh, doorstep and said yeah no like your machine doesn't work. He's like, oh, did you try and, you know, did you put the throttle in rabbit mode? And that's when I said, yeah, no, I'm not dealing with you anymore. Because uh, it's one thing to uh, one thing to ask a question. It's a much, much deeper thing to go and insult someone's intelligence that much. Especially when he was the one that rented it to me and said, hey, you know how to use it? And I said, yeah, I'm a plumber. This is how we uh, compact trenches. And uh, he goes, oh, well, you'll be good then. They were, they were green, what were they? They were Wacker? They must have been Wacker brand, I reckon. Which I've never normally had dramas with Wacker stuff. So, Carby's a slide-on setup. Push the uh, vent tube for the crankcase back in. Such a crankcase vent. It's just a overflow or equalization line, I believe. It doesn't look like it went anywhere else. So you should be able to then push your breather out of the way. Slide your little carb this way. We do have to get the carb off the studs, over, and pull this pin out. Which I'll try and do now. With one hand. Studs are quite long. Just gotta get that whole air box and everything in there, of course. Okay, get that off. Oh, hello. Needle and seat's not turning off. Oh, then again, it's upside down. So we just pull that off, that linkage. You have a carby in your hand, still connected to fuel. Okay, so, mind your choke butterfly. You can see a brass piece in there, shining in the centre. That's your jet. And uh, that's what I'm hazarding. I guess it being blocked. Obviously it's a bit dirty too, so we're gonna hit this with the brake clean and give it a clean up. You wanna get that off again once you've done it. Brand Zakabi, McEwney, McEwney, which is pretty common. So, uh, yeah, we're getting fuel to the bowl now, which I wasn't before. 
there's fuel in it. It's not overflowing until I tip it upside down, so that means the float's doing its job, which means it has to be the jet blocked. So when we sit that up here out of my way for a sec, we've got a thermal block, thermal barrier, and gasket all in one. It doesn't look amazing, but it doesn't look like dirt's been getting in either. So that's a win. Uh, we might have to crimp this fuel line off and um, check out that main jet. So if you don't understand how jets and things in carbies work, you're going to want to pull this apart on a clean bench with instructions for the carby at your side. Um, I don't know this carby in and out, but basic carby knowledge goes a long way. Essentially, if a main jet's blocked, you'll only be able to choke it to suck fuel through the main jet, and the main jet won't work when the choke's off. So that's, if you've got an engine that runs with the choke on, but never any other time, or it'll start beautifully with a bit of error start or brake clean or whatever in through the fuel system, that's normally a pretty good sign that your main jet's blocked. Um, or if you, you've got an idle jet, some carb is a, a bit better. So this is, we'll just have a main jet. So I'll get that stripped, put it back together and see what it does. So the way it starts now, choke on, you'll get it to start, it'll hammer two or three times, or rev up, hammer two or three times, run out of fuel, cut and die. So yeah, we'll get this uh, jet cleaned out and I'll come back. So as I've pulled this bowl off, you have your main jet in the bottom here, which sits down in your fuel and your float. Floats attached to your needle and seat. Flight goes down, fuel fills up the bowl. Pretty simple setup. So our problem is the jet's in there. So you can actually remove that. We're not going to remove it, we're just going to hit it with some compressed air, see what happens. And you should see some fuel spray and mist come up in there when you spray it with compressed air. If it doesn't clean, you may have to pull it out and clean it with like an oxy tip cleaner. Try not to enlarge the hole because you will be changing your tuning. So, I'll give this hit with a compressed air and I'll let you know how it goes. Okay, pretty successful. I've got some mist come through that jet hole and the sound challenged on the blowgun. Blowgun fitted up in that hole pretty neat. And if you don't understand how Carby works and Venturis and things work, Google it, YouTube it, find a visualization of it. It's, it sounds simple when I say it, it's not, it's actually quite complex. The principle is extremely simple. We've been using it forever. Uh, we used to use updraft carburetors. This is what you'd call a side draft carburetor. There is also downdraft carburetors. And the basic premise of it all is you have air sucking in here because of the engine turning over and your um, intake stroke creates suction, which is vacuum. Your vacuum comes flying in the engine, goes past a jet, which is a jet is a metering nozzle. Think of it that way. That's sitting down in a bowl full of fuel. As it goes past, it sucks some fuel up, atomizes it on the butterfly, which spreads it, goes in, compression stroke, fires, burns, you know, contained explosion, hello internal combustion engine. Simplified process, obviously, you know, people spend a lot of time engineering these things. But that's how they work. That's how they've worked for 100 years, 120 years, whatever. There's nothing new about them. That's why when I seen these two things on Marketplace, I said to old mate, I said, so what's the go with them? He goes, oh, we can't be bothered sending them to the small engine mechanic. We've replaced them. We're a big company. They're quite a massive company. And he said, look, they've done their time. We'll just buy new ones. We don't care. Yeah, but these are three grand. And the higher ones, like $75 a day. And the ones that I hired last time didn't work. Uh, and this one's even better because it's four stroke. So, yeah, regardless of what happens on this half of the machine, there's still a three horsepower four stroke, beautiful little engine on this side, which could be mated to an alternator or whatever. Yeah, like that's that's money right there. Like I paid two hundred and fifty dollars for the two of them, which really isn't isn't a big deal. So, if you've got the money to buy some of these things and you can tinker. They both have spark, but I started looking up the parts on eBay 
And the carbies for similar ones, they were clones, they weren't the McCuny style one, but they were clones to fit this engine, like started at $20. You can't, uh, like the air filters are $20 and they're twin stage. So, and a little engine like this, you can rebuild extremely cheap, a two stroke even cheaper, providing there's not catastrophic engine damage. But if you're a little bit handy or can Google things, you could end up with something like this. Let's see if we can get this to start now. We'll go choke on. We'll go turtle mode. Engine switch on. Okay. We got run. See if we can get it to run. No choke. Run no choke, see? That's good. Still stopping. It wants to rev up and take off. Just doesn't make a huge amount of sense. Where it is. Yeah, okay, that's not returning properly. What's going on there? So that's wide open throttle. That's closed throttle. There's spring missing there. That spring looks like it only joins those two together. Does that mean we have too much preload against the governor spring? That's what it sounds like. Is that the It's like this one's pulling on this one all the time too much. Where it's shut, it's back there. Just believe it or not, these things need to warm up a little bit before you go and start hammering. Still not really going all the way back to close throttle. See, wide open, closed. I wonder if we're missing a spring. Let's try and start that with it floating back there because this one's not pulling on it. So that was pulling well back up further. Choke first, get it to pop. So it didn't jump and take off. Not quite. Half check. Okay. Open full charge. Clearly doesn't have a motor issue.
See how quick that gets rowdy. Just let it idle for a minute and see what happens. I'll come back. So I thought I'd best pull the dipstick. And <laughs> oil poured out of the dipstick hole. Now, it's on a little bit of an angle. Obviously it's designed to be straight. But I believe it's well and truly over full because it's meant to be between here and here. That goes down in there. And it'll be meant to be tested. Basically has it sit, so. It sounded like it was a little bit labored at idle. Like it was doing something. Uh, it wasn't obviously activating its RAM. So, I reckon it might have been over full of oil. Which will never make them start easy or run easy. All right, we'll give it another pull, see if it makes any difference to the noise. Okay, after testing it for a bit, it still doesn't seem to want to be drawing enough when it's not choked. So I will have to cool the main jet out of this, clean everything on the inside, maybe even soak it in some parts cleaner and all that kind of stuff. Let's have a quick look at the other one while I'm making a video about it. I'll make these a part two. Brake clean. So, as you can see, I could get that to ram on the spot, but yeah, you could tell it was definitely choking. Like, definitely had didn't have the spice it has normally. Okay. Uh, choking. Give it a pull, see what it does, see if it'll sit there and idle. This one got any fuel in it? No, it's got fuel in it. Obviously, I don't know how old fuel in it is. See what this one does with some throttle. See if we're actually getting fuel. So as you see, all that's wrong with both of them is fuel issues. Mechanically, they're not rod knocking or nothing nasty. They're both starting. Both got good spark. Both got good exhaust. Both got good intakes. Both obviously good trans ramps. I might just order a couple of carbies. I got the model number of the motor on the video now. I'm getting them off eBay for next to nothing. 
when I just slip a couple of fresh carbies in there, I might persevere with one of them, but that's just, it's just ridiculous. actually on yeah it is see if we're getting fuel to that carb real quick while we're making a video we may as well look this might help someone diagnose theirs on the side of a trench while they're trying to do a job oh, that was pretty disgusting looking Smells like very dead fuel. Let a bit of that run out. So I don't know why. These must just be a bowl drain. When I looked at it, it doesn't serve any other purpose. Right, let's just give it a quick squirt with the air blow gun. See if it won't fray it up. Put that somewhere so we don't lose it. Can't wait to get some workbenches in here. I use that little air pump to do 100 psi when the sun's out of an afternoon when I get home from work to charge up a 150 litre air tank. It's now 11 o'clock at night and I've still got solar powered air. There's a breather up there. That's what it is. Well, it's running faster already. Get that screw back in. I might just give that breather a quick tap with the uh, air blower. I'm gonna run it out of fuel. And uh, try not to blow any seals or whatever out. It might just push a bit of fuel through that main jet. See so if this one will sit there and actually idle. That'd be cool. And then obviously, we'd best give them a service. Okay, we don't want to be, we want to get perpendicular to this just in case it squirts everywhere. Let's just that in there. See the air blower? Okay. Give it a pull, hopefully it doesn't run off and through the shed wall. You can do it. Can't remember which way to In line. It's a choke. That's no choke. Shot throttle. Nothing. So, choke. Set it. Didn't blow a fuel hose off, so that's a good start. to start.
So yeah, it's simply it's carby issues. This one's a little bit weaker on compression than that one. Whether it'll change with a bit of use, it might have sat for longer. Uh, one of them had a service sticker from 2018. Every 150 hours, it said. So yeah, there's my two waker packers. I'll uh, I'll get some uh, carbies. I'll get the carbies off, and might even buy an ultrasonic cleaner and clean it myself. Yeah, I'm sick of pulling on the cords. It's 11 o'clock at night. Thanks for watching. If you got this far, yeah, got to keep an eye out for them marketplace deals, guys. You never know what you might find. Catch you on the next one.